one. Oh my gosh. How about that guy? Look at the size of that. Look at its mouth. 21 inch sheep, first thing in the morning. That's a good fish. Look at this guy. Holy cow. This is unbelievable. Well, hello and welcome back everybody and or anybody. Christian with Mate Time for Fishing here. Um, so this is obviously not the kayak. Today I'm doing a how-to video. Uh, I'm doing a how-to sheep's head video. I'm gonna try to cover everything I know about sheep's head fishing, lay it all out on the table, um, go through all the rigs I use. I'm gonna cover free line, split shot, Carolina rig, slip float rig, and using jigs. Brace yourselves, is gonna be a lot of information. I'm gonna put markers in the timeline so you can skip around to different sections you wanna see. So I'm gonna start with a general overview of sheep's head fishing, um, how to find them, how they eat and why that's different than other fish and why that makes them so difficult to catch, and some other general tips and tricks that I've found before we get into each of the individual rigs. Let's get started. I'm using my sheep's head pint glass today. Let's get into it. Now the reason that sheep's head are called convicts is because of how they eat. They come up and they use their creepy human teeth to crush the shell and they suck the meat out of whatever they just ate, whether it's fiddler crabs, uh, oysters, barnacles, what have you, that's how they eat. And so the reason they're called convicts is because of the way they eat, they're really well known for stealing bait without people ever even knowing they're there. So a lot of times, especially when you're new to sheep's head fishing, or if you're having a rough day, which everyone has, especially with sheep's head fishing, you start pulling up a lot of empty hooks without even knowing you had a bite. But that's actually an exciting thing because that means you found some fish. So something people like to say about sheep's head fishing is that you have to set the hook before you feel the bite. And while admittedly that might get you some fish throughout the day, we can be more efficient with our time on the water. And uh, these tips and tricks and information I'm gonna share with you today can help you to catch them effectively and uh, hook up a lot more often. A real quick thing that's really helpful for people uh, to know about sheep's head is that they like moving water. Now that comes into play in a couple of ways. One, um, they're more likely to feed on a moving part of the tide, meaning slack tide is not the best time to catch them. You can catch them then, but often that's not when you're gonna get the most bites. Now in that moving water, look for eddies or current breaks. Um, so that's the backside of a piling or a piece of structure where the current kind of swirls around. Now what those eddies actually does is it actually gathers up free food and food particles, whether it's shrimp or bits of crushed up clams and oysters, stuff that they like to eat anyway. Now what those sheep's head can do is sit on the back of the piling and not use as much energy because they're not fighting the current and just have free meals pushed into their face. So if you find a good looking spot and then drop the bait right in the eddy, that's gonna be the most likely chance that you'll have at finding a good sheep's head or any sheep's head for that matter. And people often see them feeding there. That's where most people see them for the first time is feeding on the back of pilings. They come all the way to the surface. Sometimes you'll see them on their side, tail out of the water, feeding on the side of a piling. Now what those fish are usually doing is eating barnacles and oysters and soft corals that grow on the side of docks. And so that's one of the main ways that we're gonna target these fish is by finding those areas that have more barnacles, more oysters and more soft corals growing on them. So what some people actually choose to do, and this isn't something I do, but I do know it works, uh, is they will actually scrape pilings for those oysters and barnacles and basically use them as a chum in the water. Now I'm not recommending people do this, but if you do choose to do this, make sure you check with your local laws and regulations before trying anything like that. One of my favorite things to do uh, when fishing is to target sheep's head on inshore docks. And the reason for that is it's a great piece of structure on the creek and it's a really good way to find them. So when I'm choosing docks that I wanna try, I look for uh, how many pilings they have, how deep are those pilings, and how much growth is on the pilings. Older docks tend to have more uh, growth on them, whether it's barnacles, oysters, soft corals, and all those things are things that sheep's head are seeking out to feed on. The more potential food there is for sheep's head to eat, the more potential there is for sheep's head to be on a dock at a certain time. So if I'm cruising a new stretch of a creek trying to find potential spots, the first thing that'll catch my eye is how many pilings does the dock have and how much growth is apparently on them. From a distance, you can usually spot them from pretty far away. So if you're fishing a stretch and you find one dock in particular, that the only thing that sets it apart from the other ones is it has a drop off, whether it's one foot, two feet, three feet or more, fish that dock. The deeper it is under a dock, especially if it's deeper in comparison to the dock surrounding it, the more food that gets washed down there by the current 
and kind of builds up. Think of it like a little pocket where the current flows over and all those little bits of oyster shells and little shrimp and stuff like that get washed in there. The sheep's head are gonna cue in on that and start to gather there. So if you find a deeper pocket amongst an otherwise relatively shallow creek, there's a good chance there's gonna be some fish in there and specifically sheep's head. Here's a few tips about gear to use. So as far as reels go, um, I'm not too particular about it, uh, but I like a 2,500 or 3,000. You're not gonna need a whole lot of line, especially if you're vertical fishing, because typically you're just dropping straight to the bottom. So if you're in 10 feet of water, you might be able to get away with 30 feet of line, although I don't recommend it. All the gear that we're choosing is essentially trying to get a slight upper hand or advantage on these fish that are so sneaky. So braided fishing line is important because it has no stretch. So you can feel those little subtle taps that those fish bring to the table. Um, you feel everything that's going on with the bait when you use a braided fishing line. I usually use 15 pound test. Heavier would be fine too. Um, you're gonna have a leader on there. Typically I use a 20 pound fluorocarbon leader. Um, you can go down or up depending on your own needs, but that's personal preference. Um, they are line shy, so you do wanna go a little bit on the lighter side, but obviously if you're fishing structure and docks, there's a lot that can cut you off, so that also should come into account. You don't want to be breaking fish off every five minutes. One, you don't want to be leaving hooks and gear and fish and also in the docks, but you also don't want to have to retie that often. You also want to use a fishing rod that has a uh, fast tip, but also is relatively stout and has some decent backbone to it. I used to use much more of a, a wet noodle of a rod. Uh, now I've realized that I need something more medium powered as opposed to medium light. Um, something that can haul out a big fish as the fish have gotten progressively bigger the more I sheep's head fish. I've used a lot of different rods from the kayak while sheep's head fishing and also from land, uh, but by far my favorite rod is the one I currently use, which is the uh, Toadfish Convict Rod. As the name implies, it's built specifically for sheep's head. So this rod's great. It's very lightweight. Um, it's five foot 11, and so it's very short. Uh, so it's more maneuverability, better hook setting range. Um, and it also has a fast tip, which means you can see the really small amount of weight on the end of the rod uh, with your light rig or when you start picking up and find a sheep's heads there. Another important thing I need to stress with sheep's head is you need to fish slowly. Um, they sometimes will hit very quickly as you've seen in my videos, uh, especially once you start getting on a decent bite, but often you need to leave it there for a minimum of a minute to know for sure if there's a fish that's willing to eat. And when I say leave it there, I mean do not move that bait. Um, the more movement, the less natural it looks. You can let it flow with the current, but if you're moving it against the current especially, it just doesn't look natural. Uh, particularly in the winter, um, like other fish, they feed more slowly, so you need to really let it soak there for a minute or maybe even two before you decide to move on to another area or even just move it to the next piling. So let's start out with the Carolina rig. Uh, the basic structure is a sliding egg weight on the main line. Uh, with a swivel below that and then a short leader. Now the main difference between this Carolina rig and one you might use for other inshore species is the amount of leader line you're gonna use. You want a short leader about six to eight inches. Um, so I'll run you through my standard setup that I normally use, uh, but all of this depends on factors like current and depth. Um, so essentially I mainly use a half ounce egg sinker on the main line with a swivel below it. Now, some people like to put a bead in between the egg weight and the swivel, that's user's choice, but for me, it's just more equipment to use, and the more equipment, especially with sheep's head fishing, the more you're gonna be retying and the longer you're gonna spend retying. Um, and so what I do is I pick a swivel that is bigger than the opening of the egg weight so that it can't go over uh, the swivel and it can't get jammed in there and mess up your rig. Then I use about six to eight inches of 20 pound fluorocarbon leader and my hook of choice with any of these rigs is a size one owner mosquito hook, which I typically attach with a loop knot. The loop knot's great. If you don't know how to tie one, learn how to tie it. Um, there's a lot of great videos on YouTube about how to do that. Um, what I like about that, with, particularly with any type of live or cut bait, is it gives it a more natural float in the current as opposed to the hook being attached at a set angle with that uh, you know, clinch knot or whatever you might use. A loop knot allows the bait to kind of flow in the current. Now obviously uh, the amount of weight you use fully depends on how deep you're fishing and uh, the amount of structure you might get snagged on as well as the type of current you have. But um, that's my standard one. I've used that as much as you know, 
15, 20 feet of water, and all of this is condition dependent. So I found this uh, rig to be particularly useful when casting towards structure, whether it's towards a bridge, uh, when you're fishing from further back, or you're casting under a dock you can't get to, and you're kind of just throwing it under the pilings and then letting the line tighten up. The way I fish it is I cast it towards the structure, let it hit the bottom, when it hits the bottom, which you'll figure out when, um, just from experience, when it hits the bottom, all of a sudden the line will slack up and you can tell it stops sinking. At that point, I close the bale and pull in most of the slack so that I can feel uh, the weight on the bottom. So I typically will pull the rod up current and put my finger on the line so I can feel any little taps with the bait that might happen. And I want the rod tip to be very slightly bent. That way I can see anything that might happen with that bait. The best way that I've found to do this is to cast the bait down current. So that way the everything's lined up appropriately. You have the egg weight here and you have the bait facing down in the current. Then when something grabs it, you'll hopefully feel it as the line pulls through the egg weight. I used to fish this vertically. Um, it's just not that effective from my point of view because in order to find out that a fish is there, you have to fully lift up six to eight inches so that the line straightens out and you feel a fish there. It's more guesswork from my point of view. I think there's better rigs for fishing vertically, but that's just my two cents. This is all opinion based. I'm just trying to share my information with you guys. Moving right along, probably the next most used rig, if not the most used rig, is the split shot rig. With this rig, all you do is you attach your leader line to your main line. I prefer to use a double uni knot, but you can use whatever knot you want. Um, I would encourage you against using swivels to attach that. If you don't know how to tie a line to line connection, take the time now to learn how. There's great videos out there. Um, the easiest one uh, that has proved to be very strong in the long run that I use constantly is the uni to uni or the double uni knot. It's great for attaching braid to fluorocarbon leader. Um, so what I'll have for the switch shot rig is I'll have my main line, which is typically 15 or 20 pound braid attached to a 20 pound four carbon leader. I typically use about three feet of that, maybe three and a half. Um, the longer you go, the safer you're going to be fishing around structure. If an oyster even looks at your braided line, it's going to cut but the fluorocarbon is a lot more abrasion resistant. Then to the end of the line, you attach your hook again with a loop knot. And again, it's that size one mosquito hook from owner. Um, that's what I like to use anyway. And then uh, above that, you put a split shot. How much weight you're using with the split shot is going to completely depend on how deep you're fishing, the wind, the current, all that stuff that these other rigs and their weights depend on as well. But um, typically I use as small of a split shot as I can use and still get to the bottom and feel confident in knowing that I'm on the bottom. Uh, the more you fish with split shots, the more you'll know what I mean. But the lighter the weight, the more bites you're going to get uh, to an extent. Meaning that if you don't know if you're on the bottom and so you don't know if there's a fish taking your bait, it doesn't matter how light your rig is because you're just going to be missing bites anyway. But the heavier you go, the fewer bites you'll get overall if that makes sense. Now I fish it two different ways if I'm casting it versus if I'm uh, fishing vertically. If I'm fishing vertically, I actually will slide the split shot right up to the hook or right up to the beginning of the loop knot. And the reason I do that is limiting the distance between the weight and the bait means that you're more likely to feel any bites. Uh, the more distance in between the two, the more room that the fish can move uh, with the bait without actually moving the weight, which is what you're feeling for on the line with the split shot rig. Now by sliding the split shot right on top of the hook like that, you're essentially just making a very light uh, sheep's head jig, which is a really great system. And I'll talk about that later uh, for catching these fish. Now, if I'm casting towards structure, what I'll do is I will slide the weight about maybe four or five inches above the hook. Um, that way it just has a little bit more of a natural lay uh, it's more similar to the Carolina rig there, but because it's so light, the fish can actually run with it a little bit, which is not typical of a sheep's head bite, but they will do that with a split shot rig because it's so light. Um, if you go with a really giant split shot, that might not happen as often. So if I have the split shot right on top of the hook where I'm fishing vertically, I will go right on the backside of a piling or whatever eddy around structure you're finding and just drop it straight down. Open the bale, let the line fall out. When the line stops pulling out, that's how you know you're on the bottom. Uh, you will close the bale and then pull up almost all the slack so that you know um, that you're just barely touching the bottom. You'll rest it on the bottom and then you'll slowly raise the rod tip up maybe every 20 seconds or so. Uh, what's good about having that little bit of slack is that if a fish bites it, 
So when they chew on it, because you're using braid and there's no stretch, you'll see the line actually jump if it's calm enough. Alternatively, if you have that split shot slid up a couple of inches and you're casting towards structure, uh, once again, I will typically cast down current and let it hit the bottom. You let the line fall out and when it stops falling out, you know you're on the bottom. Reel up most of the slack and then leave a little bit of a bow in the line. And once again, I'm picking my rod up and aiming it up current and watching that line. A lot of sheep's head fishing is line watching because the way they eat is they're chewing on the bait. And so you'll see the line jump as they're chewing on it more so than you'll actually see your rod tip move. Um, with all of these, you start seeing a little bit of a bend in your line that wasn't there before, or all of a sudden there's more bow in the line because a fish has picked up your bait and actually moved towards you a little bit. Reel up the slack if there is any and set the hook into them. Hook sets are free and you don't know how many chances you might get at a sheep's head. Although often, if you don't get a good hook set on them, they'll eat your next bait as well. Another thing to note about the split shot rig before I move on is that the more distance is between the weight and the hook, and this is true with the Carolina rig as well, the more likely you are to get snagged. Now, if you do a knocker rig or you have the weight right on top of it with a split shot rig, it's a lot less likely to be snagged. Now, don't be worried about having that split shot right up close to the hook. These fish are eating oysters, barnacles, crabs, stuff that is way bigger, way heavier than that split shot. If anything, that little bit of extra crunch when they're biting on that split shot is gonna seem more realistic to them and more natural. So the best conditions for using the split shot rig in my experience are light winds, uh, light current. Um, you're not typically using a very heavy weight. If you had to use a heavy weight, I would recommend going to the Carolina rig. Probably the best and certainly the most natural presentation for uh, sheep's head fishing or any type of fishing with live bait is free lining. Now what that is, is exactly what it sounds like. Free lining is just tying a hook on the end of your leader line and putting the bait on that hook and letting it sink down. You don't put any weight, you don't put anything else, no floats, anything like that. You are literally just letting a bait float in the current and there happens to be a hook in it. Now, obviously you need shallow conditions and you need calm conditions for this. You can't be doing this in 20 feet of water uh, with an outgoing strong tide and 20 mile an hour winds. This is just a calm day, shallow water kind of situation. But if you do find the conditions to do this, it's a really fun way to fish and it's also very effective. I've caught some really big fish doing this in surprisingly shallow water and also a lot of them. I've also had days where it's just a ton of fun it might be smaller fish, but it's nonstop action. It'll get bites quickly. So again, I'm using that same 20 pound fluorocarbon leader, about three feet of it. Length's not super important. You just want enough of it that you're not in as much danger of getting broken off if they get towards piling. Uh, and again, that same size one owner mosquito hook uh, attached with a loop knot. The best way to do this definitely to get into the spot that you want is one of two ways. You either drop it perfectly vertical on the back side of the piling. It gets in that eddy and it goes straight down to the bottom. Or you cast up current a little bit of the piling or the structure that you think the fish might be on and watch the line very carefully as it sinks down slowly to the bottom. If it straightens out on you or it all of a sudden stalls out, the fish grabbed it, so set the hook. Now for the rig that I definitely use the most often and that is using a sheep's head jig. Now you guys know, if you've been watching my videos for any amount of time, I love using sheep's head jigs. You attach it like a hook. Once again, I like to attach with a loop knot. Uh, sizes vary greatly. They go down as light as you know a quarter of an ounce. I've seen them even lighter than that, all the way up to several ounces. All of this just depends on the depth and the conditions you're fishing, the current and the wind, all that good stuff. Uh, I think these are best fished vertically. You can cast them towards structure, but I will only use these vertically out of personal preference. That's just the best way to use them in my opinion. Standard weight I like to use that I think is probably the most universal for most situations is a half of an ounce. I've used that in as deep as 15, 20 feet of water and haven't had any issues getting it to the bottom. Um, you go much deeper than that, you'll probably want to think about a three quarter or an ounce, as well as if it's super windy or strong currents, also, again, you're gonna to wanna to think about those heavier weights. Um, but then I've used an ounce in as much as 50 feet of water recently in my nearshore video. Um, so there's a lot of applications for it. The way I like to do it is I drop that bait straight down uh, on the backside of a piling, near a piling, near other structures, whatever I'm doing. Uh, let it hit the bottom so you'll see the line stops falling out. Close the bale, tighten up the line. Best case scenario, if the conditions allow for it, I'll keep the rod tip about a foot off the water 
um, and lift it up just enough so you see a slight bend in the rod. So you know that the um, jig is still on the bottom, so it's not fully bent over, but you can feel what's happening. And that's really important that you have that little bit of bend in the rod tip, which again is why uh, it's important to have a fast or extra fast rod tip. Often sheep's head feet up. And what that means is they pick up the food off the bottom and they lift it off the bottom and sit there chewing it. Now, if you have that jig with your rod tip slightly bent and all of a sudden it goes like this and straightens out, you know a fish is currently chewing on it. It didn't run, so if you didn't have uh, the line tight, you had a lot of slack in your line, you wouldn't know this had happened. But when that happens, set the hook and hold on because you never know if it's going to be a uh, small sheep's head, large sheep's head, large redfish, large black drum. It could be anything. It's what makes this kind of fishing really exciting. And also the reaction time aspect of it. You have to set that hook quickly. Uh, otherwise, you might miss them. You've heard me mention these guys about a million times, so I apologize. But I can't say it enough. Bel Air Jigs makes an excellent sheep's head jig. It's called the Sheep Sticker Jig, and there's also the Sheep Sticker Pro Jig now. They have strong hooks, they have sharp hooks, and they just get the job done. I like them a lot, and they're affordable, so I don't have to be worried about breaking them off. A sheep's head trip can get expensive very quickly. Um, they're definitely one of the snaggier fish to fish for, but anyway. Finally, uh, we come to the slip float ring. Now, I think this is probably the one that has generated the most interest. People seem very interested in how to rig this. So basically, it's your standard slip float. Uh, with a bobber stop above it, whether you do a store-bought one or you tie your own with a uni knot of leader material. That's what I did for a long time until I bought bobber stops recently, and now I don't think I'll ever go back unless I run out, then I'll still have to do it. But you do bobber stop, the slip float, and then below that is essentially a suspended Carolina rig. So you have your weight, the swivel, and then uh, six to eight inches of leader material. Again, I like to use a 20-pound fluorocarbon leader. Uh, with a size one owner mosquito hook attached with a loop knot. Now the exact leader length, same with the Carolina rig, can vary, but shorter is the better in my opinion and in my experience. Um, and that bobber stops great because you just slide it up and down the line and you are essentially choosing the depth that you have a Carolina rig suspended. So when you throw out this slip float rig, you're gonna see the bobber lay on its side as lines running through it. When the bobber stop hits the top, it's gonna to stand up upright. If it doesn't stand up, what that means is there was too much line, uh, so your bobber stop was set too deep. So the Carolina rig is laying on the bottom and the line's going like this and the bobber is just laying on its side. So what I do is I try to find the depth where it just starts to hit the bottom so the bobber doesn't stand up all the way. And then I slowly slide that bobber stop down about six inches at a time until it just stands up. Then go a few inches higher. So what you really want is you want that Carolina rig suspended just off the bottom in the current, so the bottom's here, and that weight is just off the bottom with the bait trailing behind it, going through the current. So when they grab it, that bobber is either gonna go under, pause out as the fish sits there chewing on it, you know, or it's gonna start going a different direction in the current. If any of those things happen, something's going on with your bait, you're either snagged or there's a fish. Um, so what you do to set the hook with this one is you reel down the slack, put that rod tip facing towards the bobber so you don't give any resistance to give the fish a, idea that you're about to set the hook on them and then you load up on them and set the hook and hopefully there's a fish there. There's a couple different ways to use this rig. Definitely the most common one and the most widely used is you cast it up current uh, parallel to a structure and you let it float down along the side of the structure. Now theoretically it's going to cover a lot of water and it's going to give a lot of different fish a chance to eat your bait. That's a really good way to do it. It does work very well and it's pretty effective at finding fish in a short amount of time. The other way to use it is to drop it straight onto the back of a piling in the eddy, again, like I do with a lot of my rigs, and really what I recommend, because you're looking for the spot within the spot when you're sheep's head fishing. And the eddy on the back side of a really gunked up, built up piling is definitely a spot within a spot. Best conditions for a slip float rig, in my experience, um, is a slow bite meaning you need to just let the bait sit there for a while and keep an eye on the bobber, see if you get a bite, or a bite that has been um, really hard to get a handle on, meaning you're pulling up a lot of empty hooks and you're not feeling any bites. A bobber is also often referred to as an indicator, which is what it would be doing in this situation. It would be indicating to you that something's going on with your bait because clearly, uh, whether it's wind or strong current or just a day where the fish are being really subtle, um, you're missing a lot of bites. And so that gives you a visual indicator to something to look at besides just your line to know that something's going on. One of the main drawbacks to using the slip float rig is it takes a lot more time to set up. 
is a lot of tying. You need bobber stops, you need this, that, you need a float, and it also takes time to dial in the exact depth with the bobber stop. But once you do and you figure out the depth the fish are feeding at, and also how deep the water you're currently fishing is, it's a very, very effective rig, uh, particularly on a day where other rigs are giving you a hard time. Anyway, that's the, I was gonna say long and the short of it, but that's the long of it. I hope you learned something, uh, even if you're uh, an expert sheepshead fisherman, uh, hopefully you learned something new from this video. I hope you enjoyed it regardless. Um, thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments if you like this kind of long format detailed how-to video or if there were any rigs or anything you think I could have touched on a little bit more. I could always do a follow-up video as well, but let me know if this helps you catch more fish as well. Again, thank you so much for watching. I hope it was helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, remember to make some time for fishing, and I'll see you next time, more than likely on the kayak. Bye.